candidates are turning to their own big guns. In the case of Hillary Clinton, the man she calls both husband and her not-so-secret weapon has been launched onto the campaign trail. Tonight here, a decisive moment. Both things taking nothing for granted this time. Can Hillary win this one? Sure. Win here? Sure. But it's going to be hard. Back in his element. So Bill Clinton is campaigning for his wife, Hillary Clinton. The former president avoided addressing Trump's recent attacks on him personally. One reporter did finally get Bill Clinton to respond. Donald Trump says your past is fair game. I've got to ask you, you keep coming up on the trail with him. Is it fair game? The Republicans have to decide who they want to nominate. Well, I'm trying to tell... Now the Democrats in the country, well, I think Hillary would be the best president. And I think there's always attempts to take the election away from the people. My political power panel is here now. Democratic strategist Basil Smeichel, Republican strategist Hadley Heath Manning. So Basil, to you first, Bill Clinton, love him or hate him, a known expert communicator. Is he losing his political touch? Oh, not at all. I, you know, I'm happy to see Bill Clinton out there. Um, he, in many respects, is still uh, one of the standard bearers of the Democratic Party, and no one understands the political infrastructure across this country better than uh, Bill Clinton. So the fact that he'll be out there uh, campaigning for Hillary, building party organizations across the country, um, I, you know, I'm looking forward to that on the campaign trail. Although, I know a lot of folks are. I, I, Hadley, I was going to say, he seemed a little bit slow on the pickup there. <laughs> but I don't, you know, he probably you know, was very tired. You know, I was, it looks like it was a great rally. Um, but, you know, I expect him to be out there in force uh, for Hillary in these coming months. Hadley, what's your take? Well, I wasn't sure at first if Mr. Clinton was hesitant to address his past or if it were Mr. Trump that he was trying to avoid. I think ultimately the Clintons are very smart and they know that engaging Trump in any way is not what they want to do right now. They'd rather keep Trump focused on the GOP primary, watch Republicans fight against one another, than to engage him in any way at this point. Hadley, I'm so glad you mentioned Donald Trump because established candidates want to end this voter intrigue with outsider candidates. Chris Christie last night attacked Trump full on. We're going to play it for our viewers. Showtime is over, everybody. We are not electing an entertainer in chief. Showmanship is fun, but it's not the kind of leadership that will truly change America. So, Hadley, based on what you just said, do you think that Chris Christie doesn't have much to lose, so therefore he feels like he can attack directly? Well, that may be the case, but ultimately what Christie's talking about and what some other GOP establishment candidates are, are talking about is they're scared looking at the poll numbers. But the, the number one most important question is, do these poll numbers for Mr. Trump translate to voters at the polls, at the caucus in Iowa, at the primary in New Hampshire? And we're going to find out in coming months. Mm. All right. Speaking of Donald Trump, Fox News' Bill O'Reilly accused him of dodging a foreign policy question during the interview last Last night, here it is. If you're elected president, are Go you going to uh, take military action against Iran? Well, I would want to help Saudi Arabia. I would want to protect Saudi Arabia, but Saudi Arabia is going to have to help us economically. They were making, before the oil went down, now they're making half, but they were making a billion dollars yeah, a but day. But you dodged my question. Would you, losing... would you take action against Iran militarily if you're president? A Depending on what the deal is, I would have to do that. I would defend certain groups of people over there. Basil, from the point of view of the Democrats, which candidate seems the easiest to, to beat when you speak with Hillary Clinton's candidates, or rather her group, which is the candidate that poses the biggest competition? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, well, Donald Trump, I think, would, just to go to him for a second, I think presents one of the most interesting contrasts between a Demo any Democrat, frankly, and, and the Republican Party. But I think there are elements of all of the candidates, whether you talk about Jeb Bush, who's going nowhere, Chris Christie, who, um, you know, we can talk a lot about sort of his uh, policies in New Jersey there, which present incredible contrast to things that Hillary Clinton has talked about here in New York. Um, but there are other candidates, particularly on issues of labor, where there are tremendous contrasts. And look, the fact that Donald Trump can't talk about foreign policy and, and isn't particularly articulate on that issue, I don't think any of his voters really care. But the question is, do they actually go out and vote? 
And so if he's going to be the standard bearer of the Republican Party going into uh, these presidential elections, then frankly, I don't think any other Republican candidate um, is, is, is a match for any Democrat. But their biggest competition is going to have to be pulling Donald Trump down and trying to negate everything that comes out of his mouth. All right. Thank you both. Basil Smeichel, Hadley Heath Manning, thank you both for the time. Be sure to tune in to Fox Business for this year's first GOP debate Thursday, January 14th. You will not want to miss.